Hey, hey, this is Ronnie B. I know that you're used to hearing me on street walking, but old Grumpy had me come over here to the comedy show, which features Miss Already, Nitra Baven, and her fellow comedians Frankie Torres and Chris Neary. And I know you guys will go, well, whoa, what's up? Well, why, is she, why is she not introducing her own show? Well, look, somehow or another, uh, Miss Already and Frankie, they were flying in from Europe. And do you know they got on the watch list, the airport security watch, watch list? So, so Chris and I are, are seeing that we can handle it. Chris, you ever have a problem with airport security? Uh, not really, no. Yeah, uh, probably because your name is Chris. Yeah, I mean, basically, I just I get on board with my clothes and my iPod, and that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, well, I'm glad you get on with your clothes. Yeah, I don't know. So coming in naked at the airport, I don't know. You know what? If you arrive at the airport naked, <laughs> then do you think you get through airport security faster? Uh, see, I, I think they would, but I don't know. I mean, some people, there are some, you know, there's some unhappy cats that do not dig the Chris philosophy. So, you know, I, I got in trouble, but, uh, I don't know. You know, because I'm but, thinking that, hey, look, I'm, I'm, you know, I ain't worried about the guy having a bond. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, hey, look, you know, so maybe, you know, we should just write to Congress and say, look. If everybody showed up at the airport butt naked, we ain't got to worry about them, you know, sneaking bombs aboard, contraband. Exactly. You know, we, you know, we could say that. You know, we might be able to save the. You know, we we should write to President Obama. We might be able to save them a ton of money. Absolutely. You see, you know, he's not he's they want the full guy. body imaging and all of that. When man, hey, just show up butt naked. Yeah. There you go. I think I think I think it could work. I think I think uh, Mr. Obama would uh, get on board with that. He seems like a you know like a hip dude. Yeah, I think that would be be a reason with just every you know grandma, granddaddy, kid just just show up butt naked at the airport. And that way, you know, everybody you you you, you ain't got to look over your shoulder and wonder if this the one, and and just go on with it. Yeah, there you go. Yep. That's now, what that's what uh, I should do. Okay, now 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 fans, just the listeners, just to let you know. All right, that that you know, old Grumpy got some pool, so uh, he already sent a couple of his representatives to the airport so that we can get things straightened out because we want to, you know, we 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 got to get Miss Already and uh, Frankie, you know, you know, back on the show here. So uh, as soon as they get into the studio, you know, we're gonna mic them up and get them on. But in the meantime, you know, like like, and you know, old Grumpy don't like to pay no bail money, but but for those two. Uh, you know, he, he might have to break out his American Express. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to roll on. Uh, uh, hey, Chris, how, how was your week? What, what happened with you during the last week? Well, i got to say, I actually had a very good week. I had probably one of, the, one of the biggest showbiz highlights of my career. Check this out. At the, you know, I do, I do the uh, Dirty Sexy Comedy in, uh, here in uh, North Houston on Wednesday nights at the XS73 Bar and Grill. And they actually named a hot dog after me. Oh man! Yeah, it is. Uh, it's called it's called the Neary Dog. The Neary. Now, what makes the Neary Dog special? Now, the Neary Dog. Well, let's see. Well, uh, well, what, uh, what's special about it? It's a uh, you know, it's a foot long, half pound, you know, hot dog. So right off the bat, it's medically accurate. And. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's got the uh, hey. Here's here, here's what's on it. It's got it's got uh, onions, pickles, jalapenos, relish, and not one but two kinds of mustard. It's got the regular yellow mustard, and it's got spicy mustard. Because you know it's, you know sometimes I can't make up my mind what kind of mustard I want. You know, because because I, I like I like both mustards. In terms of in terms of mustard, you know, I I swing both ways. You know, whatever whatever you know whatever I'm in the mood for. But you know, I decided you know let's marry the two. Let's let's put the spicy mustard and regular mustard together at last. So I think it's time for them to team up. <laughs> not not not. Uh, you know what? 
Uh, see, I have heard you can judge a man by his mustard. That's true. That is, a, yeah, I think that's an old, yeah, that's an old saying that they used to, they used to say. Yep, you can judge a man, and, and you know, uh, you know, I'm glad that 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 you aren't stuck, you know, pigeonholed, you know, in, in your mustard. But the Neary dog, man, I, man, I don't know that a half pound. How that's starting to sound pretty good to me. It's pretty. I got. I had one myself. It is. It is delicious. Those yeah, X seventy three guys. They know. They know how to do a hot dog. Man. All right, okay, man. We want to send a shout out to them, you know, especially if they 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 highlight the Neary dog. Yeah, yeah. You, cool. Are you getting the cut? Well, they do let me. They do let me uh, purchase a Neary dog. Oh, they let you purchase it. Okay, <laughs> all right. I get the I get the privilege of uh, of purchasing it. Okay, okay. I mean, I mean, I feel they did at least both, you know, set you up with a. You know, maybe four a month or something, one a week while you perform. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, like eat it on stage. I actually, I actually, no joke. I had to eat mine with a knife and fork. This thing is huge. Now that 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 now that's a you know, hey hey, all right. If you're in North Texas, you uh, you know where to go to get you a Neary dog. All right. Yes. Uh, anything else good happen this week? Uh. Yeah, that's that. That was pretty. That was pretty much the highlight. I uh, oh, what else? I think, yeah, I got up. You know, I got up and uh, worked the set, and uh, you know, had a good set. And uh, yeah, X to seventy three. Yeah, they had. They actually had a really good show there. They had uh, Slade Ham and Sam Damaris. Yeah, two local guys that are pretty. That are pretty good. Oh, okay, awesome man. We show. got to get them folks on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah let, them, let, let them get a little, little pub, a little press on old Grumpy Radio on the comedy show. Uh, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, my, my week was rough. Oh, man. It, it, it was rough, let me tell you. First off, you know, um, uh, ordinarily my show is street walking. So that tells uh-huh. you automatically, you know where I'm out, in the hot sun walking. Oh, wow. You know, because that's the name of the show, Street Walking. And right now, for uh, for a few months, I'm doing some work uh, out of this town, and I do say town, uh, called named Monticello, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I'm used to walking the streets in Houston. You try yeah. walking the streets in Monticello, Arkansas, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, first, first off, what street? <laughs> <laughs> they got roads out here, and then you know to 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 to, to add to it, you know it, you know it, uh, you know every few minutes somebody see you walking, they offering you a ride. <laughs> They're like, what are you, you know? Hey man, you walking? It's hot. I'm going. Well, you know that's my job. I, I, I street walk, and um, look, I'm not a hooker, you know. But that, yeah, that's what we do on street walking. We interview people. We walk up on folks. So you know, we got to be out there and stuff. So you know, and, and you know, I had to. They had the sheriff. You know, you might. Some of y'all might remember. So I shot the sheriff. Well, yes. let me tell you here, you ain't shooting the sheriff. <laughs> and you <laughs> sure ain't shooting the deputy, because they'll be on your ass. <laughs> yeah. And you won't be found. Yeah. But, you know, man, it was, it was rough. It's 90-some degrees. It, it rained, and I'm out here street walking. And, and I think what made it really worse was I got bit by a spider. Got bit by a spider? Damn, what kind of spider? I, a, a dead one, because after his ass bit me, I squashed him. But man, my my hand squunk, squole up. Like I, I, I mean, I, it felt like I was walking around with a baseball mitt. Ouch! Oh That's man, it, you know, like it, you know, and you know, you 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 try to shake somebody's hand and you pull out something like that. Let me tell you. Like I said, but but it it, it, it was rough. It yeah. was rough. Believe, and then. Yeah. My, my my niece came in from Atlanta, and you know, to trying to take care. Of, well, now I'm, you know, I, I'm not used to have, having young, young people's around, yeah. and I didn't realize how much stuff they can get into. <laughs> I mean, they've created some new ways to get into, and I'm gonna tell you, I got I got bells and whistles on the internet, right? Yeah, and, and, and uh, she she's steadily trying to crack my code. Uh-huh. And I'm going, why are you trying to crack my code? 
And she was honest about it. She said, yeah, cause, so I can, you know, turn off the stuff, you know. <laughs> now, she's but, nine but, years but old. She's trying to but, get but she's trying to the code to my password so that you can turn off all the stuff that I got so that you can't get into it, you know. But she was honest. She was honest. And if she cracks the code, I'm just change it or something, you know. <laughs> all right, well, hey, look, um, uh, 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 I'll be checking with old Grumpy to see if it, I don't know. I wonder if he sent the limo out to pick them up. I don't know. We had to check back with old Grumpy because uh, to see if Miss Al, what's up with Miss Already and Frankie. But uh, uh, to go move on, uh, Miss Already did make sure that the weird news of the day was available. Now, yes. uh, not, now, Chris, I know you're a weird news fan. I'm a yes. weird news fan, uh, I so know. so I kind of enjoy this segment. Let, let me read this bit of weird news. All right. Woman aims to become world's fattest. An obese mother in the U.S. is trying to put on weight in order to become the world's fattest woman. My Donna goodness. Simpson from New Jersey weighs 273 kilograms but told the Daily Mail newspaper she had her heart, her heart set on reaching her goal weight of 1,000 pounds. Wow. Now, 1,000 well, pounds, for those heart. who don't get in the metric, is 450 kilograms, which means she already had 273 kilograms, over, over 500 pounds. But her goal weight is 1,000 pounds in two years. The 42-year-old already holds the title of the world's fattest mother. Talk about your mama fat. After giving birth to her daughter in 2007, which she weighed a mere 241 kilograms. So she wasn't, oh, no, she was was over 500 then. Now, this is what, quote her, I'd love to be 1,000 pounds. It might, might be hard, though. Running after my daughter keeps my weight down, Ms. Simpson told the Daily Mail. Hmm. Ms. Simpson, who needs a mobility scooter to go shopping, eats huge amounts of junk food each week and tries to move as little as possible. I don't get how how she got a problem moving as little possible with over 500 pounds. So she doesn't burn off as many calories. I do love cakes and sweet things. Donuts are my favorite. I guess she's hanging out with Charles Barkley, she said. Yes, so. Miss Simpson said she also loved eating sushi and would often eat 70 big pieces in one go. Now, her 49-year-old partner, Felipe, who she met on a dating site for plus-size people, there is somebody for everybody, was encouraging her to reach her goal, she said. I think he'd like it if I was bigger. Talk about a whole lot of love. He's a real belly man and completely supports me. You better be a strong motherfucker if you try to support that. (laughs) She said to put on enough weight, Ms. Simpson would need to eat 12,000 calories a day, which is six times the recommended daily intake for women. In order to pay for the enormous amounts of food she is eating, her weekly grocery bill is $815. Ms. Simpson makes money by running a website. Now listen to this. She makes money by running a website where men pay to watch her consume fast food. Oh my goodness. Chris. That's this whole, there's there's all there's all kinds of wrong in this article. I gotta say. Okay, first off, she's got a website where, where people pay to watch her eat. Yeah, men. Men pay to watch her. She didn't say women said men pay to watch her eat fast food. That's 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 ridiculous. Like like you know, giving her giving her money for that, that's that's money I could spend on see here's here's what I here's what I'd do. I, I could like go get my own fast food and eat it in front of a mirror. And like <laughs> eat it for then then I get lunch and I'm watching myself eat for free. <laughs> Every day is. Look, 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 that's, you know, I mean, if your goal is to be the fattest person ever in the world, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta rethink your life, man, because that's that's not that's not a that's not a goal. 
that you want to reach. And plus, oh yeah, also the guy said, what did he say? He said he's a real belly man. <laughs> right, he's a real belly man. He's, a, he's, in the, he's in the belly, oh my goodness gracious. But yeah, I mean, hey, you know what? The thing is, it's kind of a love story because, you know, they found each other. Oh, yeah, they love. found each other. Well, that's what they said. He was on a dating site for plus-size people. Yeah, so so they found each other. Although it's, you know, when they're that big, you know, it's it's hard to miss each other. You know. <laughs> that's, an, that's insane. Uh, uh, hey, how that song go? Strangers in the night. Strangers in the night. <laughs> they, yeah, they don't have to worry about it, huh? Yeah, they're strangers, all right. That is, that is insane. Now, now I'm still trying to figure out how to, she's concerned about reaching a goal because she has to run after her daughter, and that keeps her weight down. Now she's over 500 pounds. How much running do you think she can do? I'd say. I mean, I, I think she could probably make about three feet before she gets winded. Yeah, I'm going to come on, you know. Oh, I have to run after my daughter. She ain't ran after nothing. Yeah, yeah, unless, unless her daughter's running like, you know, a marathon or something, and he, she's got to run after her. Then... Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the, the, probably she, the, her daughter running from three feet from the table to the, to, the, uh, to the stove to get her a plate, you know. <laughs> All right, well, hey, look, we're going to move on, you know. But uh, we, now, the second set of weird news, uh, the ACLU, and for some people, we, we had to spell that out, that's the American Civil Liberties Union, sues to protect the right to square. The right Philadelphia, to square. Philadelphia, then it's the rooters. That. We don't make this stuff up. An American rights group is suing the police in Pennsylvania for issuing tickets which carry a jail sentence to people for squaring. The American what? Civil Liberties Union, which filed the lawsuits earlier, argues that the right to use profanity is protected by the U.S. Constitution. Unfortunately, this is a quote, unfortunately many police departments in the Commonwealth do not seem to be getting the messing message that squaring is not a crime, said Mary Keith Tuthill of the ACLU of Pennsylvania. Quote, the courts have repeatedly found that profanity, unlike obscenity, is protected speech. Obscenity under the Supreme Court's de definition refers to speech that mainly appeals to the, quote, purient interest, quote, in sex, according to the ACLU. Uh -huh. One lawsuit involves an unidentified woman in Lucerne County in northeast Pennsylvania who is given a citation which carries a maximum penalty of $300 and 90 days in jail after she yelled an offensive word at a motorcyclist who squirmed close to her in October. In a separate case, a man was arrested, cited for disorderly conduct, and briefly jailed after shouting a double expletive at a policeman who was writing him a parking ticket. The two are among at least 750 people in Pennsylvania a year who face illegal disorderly conduct charges because of the use of profanity in Pennsylvania, the ACLU said. Wow. Well, first off, my question: What's a what's a double expletive? Uh, uh, that, now, why are you asking me? Because I do no, street walking. We should probably we should probably write a letter to Pennsylvania and say like, hey, what's a, what's a double expletive? Now you know, you know now, I'm kind of old. I've been, school. Yeah, I've been, I've been now, 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 I remember uh, what was it? It was uh, I'm trying to think. Was it Richard Nixon with the tapes? And he had those double expletives, and they had to blank them out. Aha. Uh -huh. Could be, yeah. You Could know, I, I think that that they, so I so we never got to learn what a double expletive is. Yeah, and yeah, weird. Yeah, you know, because yeah, I wanted like, that is that the same as going oh fuck it and kiss my ass in the same sentence? <laughs> you know, what yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh shit, shit, fuck. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what what is a double double expletive? You know. 
Yeah. And, and by the way, I'm not going to ask my nine year old niece. She probably knows the answer. <laughs> okay. God, man. Yeah. But man, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole, it's a whole kind of free speech. People in thing, Pennsylvania you know? a year get arrested for cussing. Yeah. Get, yeah, getting arrested, yeah, that, that seems very unconstitutional to me. Well, well, you know, like, what do the policemen have to do? Don't they, yeah. don't they have crime? In, I know they got crime because they got Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we know they got you know crime, you know crime. So these must be parts of the state where they ain't got no, nothing to do. I think they still got Barney and Andy running around, so, you know, with Ain't Me. And for the, for yeah. those of uh, y'all who don't know what, what what I'm talking about, watch TV Land and you'll find out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I mean they got to they got to find something else to do. I mean, it's like don't go after people for swearing. No, that's 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 just ridiculous. No. I mean, I just I just picture like you know like a car thief and the guy that swore like stuck in the same cell. Say, hey man, what'd you do? It's like I stole, I stole a Lamborghini. What did you do? I, uh, I, I said shit in no, front I said, of the cop. Said fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Absurd. It's craziness. Yeah. <laughs> ninety, 90 days, days in jail. Ninety days in jail. Ninety days. That's, in jail. that's I mean, I mean, the three hundred dollars is bad enough. Ninety yeah. days in jail. I know guys yeah. who who they don't get 90 days for not paying their child support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this guy, all this, all, all this lady had to do was, uh, you know, say, you know, say a double X with it. <laughs> and it's, it gets jail time. 90 days, 300 bucks. Okay. Now, I, I have a feeling yeah. old Grumpy ain't sending us to Pennsylvania. <laughs> No, definitely not. It's, a, it's like it's like didn't didn't we cover that whole obscenity thing with the, the Lenny Bruce trials? Well, well, you know, what, you know? I, I think the the difference is is that um, Lenny Bruce was doing a performance. Yeah. So it, it was contained, you know, like uh, uh, it was contained into a, a a a show where the expectation was that he would do that. Yeah. You know, so I'm paying to hear my, my, my comedian cuss at me. Yeah. So I guess what they're saying is is that, well, you know, these folks ain't paying. Yeah. You know, so, uh, man, 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 who knows? I don't know. But, look, uh, we got to take a break. And during the hey, hey, listeners, during the break, we, we're going to check with old Grumpy and, uh, you know, to, to see, see if they got Miss Already and Frankie on lockdown or what. And we're going to see if we can get them back in the studio. But Chris and I, you know, we're going to keep down the fort and we're going to do whatever, whatever it takes. Now, uh, you're listening to the comedy show. That's with a K, the comedy show on the old Grumpy Radio Network. Keep those ears glued to those speakers. Don't don't take your ears off those speakers now. We're going to be right back. All right. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to the comedy show. And I am not Miss Already. I don't do a Medea. I didn't skirt up. This is Ronnie B <laughs> from Street Walking. And, and uh, I'm, I'm filling the shoes, uh, you know, that, not slippers or high heels. I'm filling the shoes for Miss Already and Frankie Torres because, you know, something happened to them at the airport and Airport security done went crazy. And, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I, I don't get why, because Frankie does not look like Mohammed uh, Baza uh, Aziwati. He does not look like that. He, you know, Frankie kind of looked like a, like, like one of the Mexican, Spanish kind of guys. And, well, Miss Already, you know, well, that's Miss Already, you know, so uh, I don't know what happened. If they might have told a bad joke on the plane or something, but old Grumpy, you know, he didn't send the crew. He didn't. He even called up the, the law firm of see you coming, and they're going to get it straightened out so we can get them back on the show this, this evening. But uh, I'm filling in, and, of course, we got Chris Neary here in the house. What's up, Chris? How's it going, man? All right, man, man. Well, we're going to just move on along here, Chris. And, uh, man, Chris, uh, I know how much you like the weird news. I like the weird news, but you know what I like even better than the weird news? What's that? Dumb criminals. Dumb criminals, yes, indeed. They are lots of fun. 
Yep. Now, you know, I have, you know, if there's one thing that keeps me from going into a life of crime, that's hearing about dumb criminals. Yes, indeed. Yep, you know, because as they say, crime don't pay. And, man, we got a couple today. Let, all right, wait just a minute. Newport Richie Mann accused a choking wife says marriage is the problem. Uh oh. Newport Richie. Oh, yes. A woman a woman told officers her husband tried to strangle her Wednesday afternoon. Quote, arrest me, Christopher L. Bukowski, thirty nine, told officers according to a report. Quote, I did it. The Newport Ritchie Police Department did not say what caused the argument between the couple who have been married five years. While the officers gathered paperwork for the investigation, Bukowski said, quote, I choked her, quote, end quote, the report states. Quote, I asked him why he did it, and he stated, if you were married, you would understand, the officer wrote. <laughs> Bukowski of 6929 McBride Court was arrested and charged with domestic battery by strangulation. He is being held without bail at the Pasco County Jail. Wow. (laughs) So so marriage drove him to do that, according to him. (laughs) Wow. I mean, it's like on one hand, it's like he said, like yes, yes, I did. Like he confessed to it. Like yes, yes, I did it. Which doesn't, which doesn't always happen. Like sometimes, you know, you, like you watch a show like Cops, and it's like you see the guy, you see the, like the husband with you know bloodied knuckles and the and the wife laid out on the floor, and he's like, yo, man, she she ran into my fist. <laughs> and this guy's straight up saying, I did it. So in a way. I don't know, but yeah, it's yeah, but it's like he's like blaming he's like blaming the fact that he's married that he did it, I guess. Well, I, I, I'm just going uh, here. It is you go to court, and mm-hmm. the judge, you know, what is your defense? I was married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, I'm, I mean, you're married, right? I mean, you like, know, I've you know, been married, I've been married, married for a while. You know, I, I got a, I have a, one, I have a wonderful you know. wife. I got it pretty good. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame like, you know, my shortcomings on you know the fact that I was married. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, I, I put it like this. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what he does for a living. Mm-hmm. But I hope he does enough because he's gonna be paying. <laughs> yeah, he's <is> gonna <laughs> be paying. He will be paying for this one, buddy. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and by the way, ladies, ladies out there. His name is Christopher L. Bukowski. So after his divorce, stay away from Christopher L. Bukowski. Uh, <laughs> that, definitely don't marry him. Starts talking about marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely don't marry him either. Yeah, dude, you do not want to marry Mr. Bukowski because uh, obviously him and marriage do not go together. No. Nah. So, yeah, I guess uh, it's mar- marriage is like uh, I don't know. Like, it's not it's not for everybody, I guess. No, no, no. Well, I get marriage ain't for everybody, but no, no it definitely ain't for him. Okay, yeah. we're moving along, and uh, okay, okay, y'all. If y'all get kids present, you you might might want to cover cover their ears for this next one, and that's only because we don't want to give them ideas. <laughs> okay, definitely. you know, student. Cod, this is it. Student condoms not filled with vomit. Huh. <laughs> Naperville, Illinois, June eighth, and this was reported by UPI. Like I said, we don't make up this stuff. Wow. An Illinois student accused of throwing condoms filled with vomit at a college security officer said the liquid liquid was actually a mixture of ketchup and water. Tyler Wilfley, 19, a student at North Central College, was charged with battery and disorderly conduct 
for allegedly lobbing the liquid-filled condoms at the security officer from a parking deck in Naperville at about 2 a.m. May 28th. The Arlington Heights, Illinois Daily Herald reported, reported, police said at least two vomit-filled condoms were thrown at the officer during the incident, splashing their contents on his car and clothing. Police thought it was vomit because it had a foul odor, but in reality, it was ketchup and water. Whiffley told the Daily Herald, I didn't throw it at the officer either. It was thrown at the hood of the car and ended up splashing him in the process. Oh, that's okay then. North Central spokesman Ted Slowick said officials will schedule a disciplinary hearing for Whiffley allegedly violating the college's conduct policy. Well, tell you, man, kids today, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, that sounds like something I probably would have done when I was, like, 17. Uh, you know what, I'd give that, yeah, you know, Chris, I, I would give you that at 17. You know, at 17, you know, you're still in high school, you still, you know, you're kind of in, in that in-between, you're not, res- you're responsible, but you're not responsible. Right, exactly. I, I give you that at seventeen, but at nineteen and in college, yeah, you know, you you kind of well, and and an excuse, you know, I wasn't throwing it at, at him; I was throwing it at his car. <laughs> I mean, come yeah, that's, on. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty weak. Yeah, and then I'm going. What are you doing carrying around? Do, does he ordinarily carry around ketchup filled condoms? Just in case he has the opportunity to throw them? I'll tell you, what this kid needs, he needs two things. He needs a strong disciplinary hearing, give him a nice hard smack on the wrist, and get him a girlfriend. Oh, man. Do you think he's going to get a girlfriend after this comes out? (laughs) Probably not, but, you know, I mean... I mean, I I, I feel like I I, I know you have a son... But if you had yeah. a daughter and Tyler Whipsley came over to the house, hey, Daddy, uh, this is my new boyfriend, Tyler Whipsley. Huh? Oh, that name God. sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you, young man. <laughs> yeah. You may not get a date for a long time. <laughs> yeah. But I think you're right. He, he need to get a girlfriend so he got something better to do. Yeah, something, something better to do. He needs to study his books and... You know, go go out go out and meet girls in college like a normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and go out and meet girls and get turned down, and then go have a beer. Well, he ain't yeah. old enough for the beer, but <laughs> well, we know he's gonna get the beer anyway. But yeah, go on out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and then you never know; he might luck up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vomit. Good, get lucky if he leaves them so die. I mean, I mean, that, that, uh, he could make a better use of the condoms. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that does kind of say something, but dude. You know, here it is. Uh, you filling your con- your condoms must be underused that you can't that all- you got time to fill them up with ketchup. I know. I know. I I, yeah. I, I, I put it like this when I was nineteen. Uh, I didn't want to waste no condom on ketchup. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, not. I, even if I was gonna save that sucker just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly, because I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, man. Okay. Imagine, imagine, move it on to the next one. Right. Oh, man, this is a goodie. This, Chris, this is a goodie. I don't know. It, it, I might have to ask the uh, production staff to check this one out, because this, this is a goodie. Man arrested after putting pot in courthouse security tray. Oklahoma City. A man was arrested after placing pot in the security tray at a courthouse checkpoint. Cleveland County Deputy Steve Lucas and Jacob Wheeler said when Von Ray Jones, Jr. first went through the courthouse security checkpoint on Tuesday, he put his belongings in a tray, including a bag of marijuana. When the deputies tried to arrest the 28-year-old, he ran off and got away. Okay? Uh But on Wednesday, (laughs) 
Jones returned at almost the same time to the check to the checkpoint. This oh time God. Jones was wearing a hat in an apparent attempt at disguise. <laughs> wow. Deputy handcuffed Jones and took him into custody. You gotta wonder about somebody that's gonna bring marijuana in the courthouse, put it in a bowl, that's gotta be a mistake, Lucas said. I guess he thought there would be different people here. It wasn't a very good disguise to put a hat on. Jones has several, several felony convictions in his past. I believe it. <laughs> wow. So so he so he took out so he had like a he had like, he had like a bag of weed and he put it in the security checkpoint. Because I mean, because I mean, first off, he doesn't need to do that. Because like when like security checkpoints, I mean, that's usually for you know like metal stuff, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, like, so so why are you why are you taking your weed out? Well, you know the other thing is, uh, I, and I hear it is okay. If I'm at the security checkpoint, I realize I got a bag of weed. Why didn't he just turn around and go put it in the car? He could have yeah. said, "Oh, you know what? Let me go back to my car." Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, was it as he was reaching back in his car. pocket? But even if I'm reaching in my pocket, and I feel it. You know, <laughs> hey, look, you know, let me, uh, you know, yeah, if I feel it, darn it. I mean, at least I'm going to pretend like I forgot something. Ah, right, give me that back. I need to go go back to my car. <laughs> you know, something. But then it, it already kind of said that, that he's one of those guys who needs to be in jail. Yeah. Yeah, because he already had several felony convictions. If he ain't wise enough already. <laughs> I know. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, remember, remember they said several felony convictions. Several felony convictions. Yeah, so you, he know you know they're all pot related. Right, he wanted to go to jail. He was begging. He was like, please let me go to jail. <laughs> you know, because that's the only reason you go bring your marijuana into the courthouse. Exactly. You know, you wanted to get cut. And, and, and then that, that <laughs> what got me was that he go wear a hat as a disguise. Yeah, he's like, you know, what, what kind of what kind of hat is, hats don't work as a disguise ever. <laughs> I ain't heard anybody get it. Well, you know what? It, 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 I think it's that that uh, that 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 thing about Superman. He puts yeah. on a hat and a pair of glasses, and nobody can recognize him. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, you know. <laughs> you know, it works it works in a Superman comic, doesn't work in real life. So I'd say a no pass in real life. Okay, hey Chris, uh wow, you know, uh I haven't got a message in from old Grumpy, but we're gonna move on a little bit and um uh, hey listeners, uh, as you know, every week we treat you to the comedy of uh, uh of our hosts for the comedy show and that's comedy with a K. And <laughs> Uh, we're going to let Houston's finest, our own Chris Neary, go ahead and grab the mic. Go for it, Chris. Let me grab the mic. All right. Well, hello out there on the Internet and on the old grumpy listeners. How you doing tonight? I can't, I can't, I can't hear him answer. But, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. It's going, it's going one way, so I can't hear the audience. But that's all right. But if you're out there, say yeah. I'll, I'll pretend I can hear you. There we go. Beauty. <laughs> Anyway, well, let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you, Ronnie. One thing I can tell you by myself, I have ADD. Like I'm very, I'm very spacey, and I forget stuff. Like I'll tell you, I'll tell you how bad it is. The other day, I went to, I was, I drove, I was driving to the store, and I realized, damn, I forgot my wallet. Before I can react and turn around, you know, Eddie Money comes on the radio. You know, you know that one song. Take me home tonight. You know, so I got to rock out to it. So by this time, I get to the store, and I realize for the second time, damn, I forgot my wallet. I actually forgot that I forgot something. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, when you're forgetful about being forgetful, you're one of two things. You're elderly or incredibly stupid. And you're asking, you know, which one am I? Well, let's just, let's just say I don't qualify for senior coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, Ronnie, one thing, one thing I can tell you, tell you something else about myself. 
I'm a uh, I'm a betting man. You know, I, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes I like to place the occasional sports wager. You know, like I, you know, I'm, the thing is though, I don't know anything about sports. You know, like the other day I lost seven thousand dollars on the bad news bears. Oh. Win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah, not only not only are the bad news bears not playing the Super Bowl, but they're fictional. <laughs> they're not going to be playing anywhere. You know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what though. I actually have a hot tip on a hockey team. You may have heard of them. They're called the Mighty Ducks. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're going to win. They're going to they're going to win this year's NWA. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, what else do I got? Actually, you know, um, as you know, I live in Texas, live in the, the fine, the fine city of uh, Houston, Texas. I mean, North North Houston, actually. And um, you know, there's, there's no place in the world like Texas. But the thing about Texas is, like, there's weird things you find in Texas you will only ever find specifically in Texas. Like, I don't know if you knew this, but Texas is the only place in the world. Where they'll sing the national anthem at a steak cook-off. <laughs> yeah, real, real thing I saw. And it's like, it's like, how's that even fit? You know what I mean? I mean, why not play rap music at a clan rally? You know what I mean? Singing, singing, the, national, singing the national anthem at a steak cook-off. The only way to make that any more Texan, you know, have Chuck Norris sing. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. and, ha- and, have- and have them somehow incorporate the death penalty. You know that's that's how you do that. Yeah. But anyway, so that is uh, that is what I got for you today. That is a l- little uh, little taste of the the Chris Neary magic. <laughs> well, 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 Chris. Uh, you know, later on we're gonna let folks that know where you're gonna be performing and stuff the next week. Awesome. But you know, awesome. I, 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 I put it like this. Uh, uh, you know, I, I got I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did play rap music at the Klan rally. <laughs> it is. It is 2010, and we have a black president now. You know, so, I mean, they and, might just, 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 just play it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything, that's, that's, what's, know, great, that's just, what's great about this. Yeah, yeah, it, thing, we have seen happen. strange things happen. <laughs> yes. We have yes, seen indeed. strange things happen. All yeah. right, man, look. Uh, well, hey, we, well, we're about to take a break. You're listening to the comedy show on the old Grumpy Radio Network. Now, keep listening. Now, we're going to be right back with Keep It a Heave It, where we listen to clips sent, sent to us from comedians who want to get heard. Uh, we listen and give our special critique of their comedy. Now, hey, if you want to get heard, make sure that send in your track and send in your phone number because we might have you as a guest on the show and you want to send it to the comedy show. You know, send it to comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com. And that's the regular way you spell it with a C. Send it on out there because we got it backed up in case you misspell it or you put the K on. We got, we got it covered and stuff. Uh, all right. Keep listening. Keep those ears glued to the speakers. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to The Comedy Show. And I'm Ronnie B. A Streetwalk, and I'm filling in for Miss Already and uh, and Frankie Torres. And uh, we got Chris Neary here. And, uh, just, just you know, Chris and I, we, we've been holding the fort this episode. Uh, that, that we have been... You know, we got a call back from old Grumpy, and he said that Miss Already and Frankie, that he sent the limo out, he done sent the lawyer out, but uh, something happened at airport security. For some reason, they think that Frankie is Osama bin Laden, and that, uh, yeah, man, they, they think think that for some reason, they've mistaken Frankie for Osama bin Laden. I don't know. I can I can I, I can... I can't see it personally because, like, first off, like Osama bin Laden is on dialysis. I've hung out with Frankie many times, and I've never seen him on dialysis. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing is, I, I really think the nose is different. Yeah. You know, and Frankie the, the mus- has that pronounced nose. Yeah. You know, I mean, mus- that's, that's guy, one of the distinguished things. Too. But apparently, they think that 
that they mistook him for Osama bin Laden, and they actually think that Miss Already is his female escort. Now, I can see why Osama bin Laden would want Miss Already as a female escort. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I could see that, you know, but uh, but but with that nose Frankie got, anybody should know. <laughs> you know, anybody should know, Chris. But, uh, you know, audience, uh, hey. we're going to keep you updated. Uh, you know, we, we hope to have him here but, but before the end of the show. But Chris and I are just care, carrying on form. And uh, right now we're about to move to one of our favorite sections of the show, and it's called Heave It or Keep It. And uh, dur- during this part of the show, uh, what we do is you get to send in your comedy or comedy clips from comedians that you like and you want us to hear them. And what we do is we give our little critique on it, okay, to, to uh, you know, to, to give them a little shout-out, give them a little love, and, and see what that, you know, that, give them a little shout-out there. Now, last week we had a couple of good comedians, and we actually we featured a comedian from the past, uh, Mom's Mabley. But this week, we have, and, and who, yeah, let me look at who we got. We have Miss Robin C. Now, uh, uh, Robin has, uh, as some people say, she has the gift of laughter. She's literally traveled the world and back just for the sole purpose of making people laugh. Now, uh, we're going to hear a little bit from this young lady, Robin C., and see what she's about. All right. Okay. Hey, y'all. What does an out-of-work receptionist from Arkansas do after she receives a large cash settlement from the president? First, you start your own psychic hotline. Then you record your own country album. I'm Paula Joe, and I just recorded my very first country CD. Woo! And I predict it's going to be bigger than my nose and hair combined. Damn, that sure is big, Miss Jones. That's right. already then already got a copy of that <laughs> yeah uh, not bad not bad that was kind of that was kind of good i, I kind of like the mix on that and yeah. uh the reference back to president bill clinton <laughs> yeah some yeah. people might have forgot that guy but he did have that little <clears throat> incident with monica Lewinsky. That's and right, uh, yeah. wonder whatever happened you know how they do uh what happened you know where are they now yeah I, I, you know, you you notice they don't do any where where are you now, so Monica Lewinsky. I think they should. So yeah, I remember, I remember like uh, the last, I think the last time we saw Monica Lewinsky that, that I saw her anyway, it was on. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Tom Green show on MTV. Wow, how long ago was that? That was that was a while. I think it was like uh, I want to say ninety nine, ninety eight, something like that. Wow. So yeah, that was uh, yeah. It was like uh, yeah. He just he just had an episode where he kind of just hung out with Monica Lewinsky. Like it was the most normal thing. Like they're just they're just kind of hanging out. They're in a limo driving around, and they're just they're just hanging out. And and I think that was that was the last uh, the last time we uh, we saw Miss Monica. Last time I saw Miss Monica anyway. Well, you know what? I think she's probably. Still single, 
Because I think we would have heard about it if she wasn't single. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure they would have made a big deal of making sure that we knew that, you know, that Monica had gotten married and, you know, what was her husband doing and all that stuff. So I kind of think that um, that she must still be single, and uh, which a couple of people are probably pretty glad about. But I, <laughs> I think she must still be single. Could be. Well, we got another clip be. from Miss Robin. Robin. Robin's kind of a trip, ain't she? She's, it's funny. That's funny yeah, stuff. She's huh? kind of a trip. Well, we got another clip from Miss Monica. From, <laughs> I'm still stuck <laughs> on Monica. But we got another clip from her, and this is where she does her version of Shaka Khan uh, and Diana Ross. Nice. Okay, let's, let's roll All that right. track. Let's hear it. This season on the Lips TV Network, you can forget Judy, Joe, and Mill. Because here comes the new judge in town, Judge Rennell. Whatever happened to Judge Edo? Did he move in with Kato Kalen or something? John Scott is the court reporter. I just want you all to know that I'm wearing Star Wars underwear. And Tracy Sterling as the bailiff. Ew, a spider! Oh, this my soft eyelash. <laughs> oh, Lord, please help her. What seems to be the problem? I'm the great Diana Ross, and this is a very mediocre shock of con. What? You better watch your mouth or I'll reach out and touch you upside. Anyway, we both entered a classic soul diva contest to settle once and for all. Who's the all-time diva? It was a tie. Can you believe that? It is quite shocking, because I should have won. That'll keep me from getting a please, big ass platform to the Side your eye, got your every woman right here. Come on now, ladies, please, please, order, order. Wait a minute. Let's settle this in a true diva fashion. Yeah, you talk again. Yes, I agree. You two should have a sing-off. I'll be a very, very fair judge. A sing-off? No, no, no. We're having a weave off. I take that, Miss Ross. That was pretty good. <laughs> I, I was just thinking it was kind of cute, a face-off between Shaka Khan and, and Diana Ross. <laughs> and we're going to settle it with a true, uh, the true way that Diva settle it, with a weave-off. That <laughs> weave there. Nice. Yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of weaving going on between those two, definitely. We, hey, hey, we know there's some bald hair somewhere. Some dog running around <laughs> naked. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. Well, we got one more clip we're going to play from Miss Aisha Tyler. And nice. um, and I, I think it's, uh, well, we'll just see. I think it's called Anger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Let's hear it. And that was Aisha Tyler, anger. <laughs> that, that definitely sounds like anger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that, that was this week's session of, of Heave It or Keep It. But look, look, y'all. Look, we want you to, to send in your own comedy. So if you're at the improv, if you're doing stand-up at that club every week and you want to get heard, Send in your clip to comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com. That's comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com. I promise you, Miss Already, Frankie, and Chris, y'all ain't going to hurt them. Y'all wouldn't hurt them, would you? 
Nah, definitely not. Now, we might talk about you bad if you're bad, but we ain't going to hurt you. Now, we just want to send some love to you. Now, make sure you include your phone number if you're interested in being featured or being a guest comedian on the show because uh, Miss Already, Frankie, and Chris, they, they sit back and they, they're analyzing, and they want to get you new artists out there so that you can get established and get known. You know, they want to give you some love. So, so again... Send your comedy clip to comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com, and you might get on the air. Now, we're about to take a break. You're listening to the comedy show on the Old Grumpy Radio Network. Come on back for our final segment. We got a couple of emails from, from uh, some of our fans we wanna, wanna, we're going to speak on. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. You're listening to the comedy show. I'm Ronnie B. A street walking, filling in for MissAlready.com and for Frankie Torres. But me and Chris Neary are in the house, and we've been handling this show. And look, we Indeed. look, listeners. We promise that you know, old Grumpy's gonna get it straightened out. He's gonna get them out of the lockup. Uh, the last report we got was that they were doing a strip search of Frankie. And for some reason, they didn't do a strip search of Miss Already, but they did a strip search of Frankie, and you know, so we, we you know, we're gonna get that all straightened out. To, but you don't have to worry about them. Uh, old Grumpy sent the limo. He sent the lawyers, and, and we, they will be back next week. But Chris and I, we've been we've been doing our best to hold down the fort. Hey, Chris, hold holding it down. Yes. Hey, 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 Chris, uh, you, you you had an update on Monica Lewinsky? I did, yes. I I looked on on uh, Wikipedia, and I read it said as of uh, as of two thousand five, she is uh, actually wait, December two thousand six. Sorry, she uh, graduated with a master's degree in social psychology, and uh, also she stopped filleting presidents. What? Say what? I guess I guess so. Like, she got out of the. Uh, you know, blowing president's thing, and I, I, she, she did it for a while and realized, you know, this, this really isn't for me. Well, you know, I, I, I'm glad that she moved on to a new career. You know, we all yeah. have to expand and grow. Absolutely. Well, well, maybe and she got enough of expanding and growing. Maybe that, let, let, okay, <laughs> but hey, look, we got a couple of emails from some of our listeners, and, and we definitely uh, want to give an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to speak on what they had to say here. And our first email came from Peter Jammin, and he says, The comedy show is a hit. Just wanted you to know that the comedy show is a hit. About 60 of us were listening to the show at our favorite watering hole here in Kingston, and we were just cracking up. Miss Already is a definite star, and we like how she hosts the show. We also like the comedy from Chris, but we wish we had heard a little more of Frankie's routine. Seemed like his segment was just a blink. Was that on purpose? The heave it or keep it section was excellent. I disagree with the vote on Roger Dodger. We thought he was a little like Weird Al Yankovic. Your salute to Miles Mabley was great. A lot of us folks appreciated the memories, even though most of us were not born when she was performing. Well, you already have 60 fans here in Jamaica, so keep up the good work, and we will keep listening. Peace. All right. Peter, still jamming. Very nice. Pretty cool. Hey, Chris, we are, uh, we are ahead. Thanks, thanks for sending that shout-out to us. And, yes, thank uh, you very much. Chris? Yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted to say something there to Peter. Oh, yes. Yes, Peter, thank you very much. Tell uh, Tell everybody... I said hello. Uh, you're going to hear this later anyway. So, hello, everybody. Thank you for listening. Glad you enjoy it. And uh, we'll keep uh, keep doing it up. Yeah. Hey, 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 and look, you know, just want to tell your, your 60 buddies that, look, man, you know, y'all can send us a couple of tickets, and we'll come on down to Jamaica. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And hold on one second. All right, and we got another email from, uh, this says from Will, and he, his subject says R-O-F-L. I guess that's roll it on the floor laughing. He said, you had me roll it on the floor laughing. 
I will be Ooh. listening every week already. Thank you, nice. Will and Charlotte. All right. Well, thank well, you, Will and Charlotte. Yeah, so so that's right. Ain't that right by you? That's uh, yeah. That's that's not far not far from me. So yeah, you think that's cool. close near 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 what uh, near Galveston or near the NASA or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, somewhere around there, I think. All right. Well, hey, that's Will and Charlotte. They was listening to the show together. Very nice. We like cool. together. Definitely. We like it's together. all about togetherness. Yep. Well, uh, just to let everybody know, if you'd like to send us your comments. Just hit us up at comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com. That's comedy at oldgrumpyradio.com. And listeners, like I said, that old grumpy, he's going to make sure that Miss Already and Frankie, you know, get released. He sent the limo on out and the lawyers and, you know, and, and uh, we got to pass the hat. We're going to have him here for the next episode. Right, Chris? Yes, indeed. Okay, Absolutely. Chris, you got any final thoughts you want to give or, or, or at least tell the audience where you're going to be appearing if you got any new releases coming out? Sure. It's, uh, you know, you can, well, you can check out my website. It's uh, chrisneary.com, and we can become Facebook friends. You can follow me on Twitter. And uh, so I, got, I got a few irons in the fire as far as uh, you know, appearances and whatnot, but I appear every week at the Dirty Sexy Comedy Show in on uh, Wednesdays here in uh, North Houston at the XS73 Bar and Grill. they got a great, great comedy show and an open mic afterwards. And I'm there every week working my thing, hanging out. So uh, stop by, say hey. We'll, uh, I will entertain you. All right, and we know you will, Chris. We know, man. We love Indeed. having you on the comedy show. And well, thank you very much. Being I love old Grumpy Radio Network. Well, folks, uh, this has been another edition, and uh, well, this is edition number two. And they, you know, hey, we're we working on number three, episode three of the comedy show. Uh, we, we had a great response, and we, and we really want you to keep listening to the show because we here at Old Grumpy Radio Network. We're featuring the future legends of entertainment and broadcasting. So, you know, hey, look, you know, we ain't got them old ones. We feature the future. So you may listen to somebody today on the comedy show, and you might be, next time you know they're doing an HBO special. But you got to hear them here first. So we invite you to tune in again next week, and we promise you, Miss Already, Frankie, Chris, and whoever else they're going to have on the show will be here. You've been listening to the comedy show on the Old Grumpy Radio Network. See ya. See ya.